Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar for Smart Steps Towards a Connected Shop. I'm Pauli Keta, the Product Development Director for all of our amazing Sigma S products, and I'm joined here today by Wayne Cathers, the Product Owner for our Business Systems apps. We're excited to share with you today a glimpse of what a high-tech, unified shop floor looks like powered by Sigma Nest. In this guided tour, we'll cover everything from creating quotes and orders to scheduling work to shop floor logistics like secondary operations and shipping. Sigma Nest is the decisive leader in maximizing what we call the five M's. This begins with efficient material use to optimizing the physical motion of the machinery. We can op automate more by better leveraging your manpower resources while managing data and connectivity around the business. When it comes to manufacturing and fabricating, you really need to be able to know where everything is at any given time. You may want to know where an assembly or a customer order is in the production process, which operations are completed and which ones are coming next, as well as when they'll be finished. I don't know is not an acceptable answer. Phoning various places in the shop or running around with post-it notes is a thing of the past. Every stage of the process from quoting and orders to offloading and shipping can be data-driven, real-time, and instantly clear. Imagine the moment the operator hits start on the machine, a customer calls in inquiring about their order status, and the office can easily and accurately convey that their parts are getting cut right now. All right, with that introduction, we're ready to begin our journey through the connected shop and see how Sigma S products can help level up your operations in ways that you might have never thought possible. Take it away, Wayne. Thanks, Paul. So the, what we want to do today is we want to show you some of the different software options and solutions that we have um, that, that's more than just programming your cutting machine. The first place we're going to start is our quote to order walkthrough. So we want to go through the process and show you the process of generating a quote, sending that quote out to our customers, and finally streamlining the process of creating the work order that we can then produce in Sigma Nest and later on throughout the shop floor. So let's take a look at that now. So with Sigma Quote or Sigma MRP, both, we can give you some advantages to your business in a few key ways. So one way is that we can give you more flexibility in your workflow, and we can also give you greater accuracy in your quoting. So let's take a look. We'll start in Sigma Nest. We'll make a new job. We can select the customer for the job. If we know the due date, we can add it now. If we don't, we can always add it later. Now, once that job is created, the next step is to add parts to the job. We can add parts in a lot of different ways. One way is by adding an assembly. These assemblies can be created in Sigma MRP, or they can be imported directly from SOLIDWORKS. The assembly can contain anything from flat cut Sigma Nest parts to bar stock to buckets of paint, nuts and bolts. And it contains the entire production process from beginning to end. We can add that assembly to a job. And then we'll hop back into Sigma Nest. And you'll notice that we've only taken the flat cut parts from that assembly so that we can nest them to get an accurate nesting cost. We can also grab a couple extra parts. And if we need to import other parts such as DXF, SOLIDWORKS, Sigma Nest gives us all different kinds of options to import parts. Now, once we have all the parts that we need for the job, we can nest everything together. We want, we want to focus on doing a nested quote because it gives us the most accurate estimate of the cost both the material cost that it's going to take to produce the parts and the processing cost for the machine to do all of the cutting, tabbing, unloading functions, any functional process that needs to happen. So now we'll head back into the job. Sigma Nest and Sigma Quote will calculate all of the nested cost for us so we know how much the material is going to cost, how much it's going to cost to run the machine, and we'll apply markups in a lot of different ways. So now we want to show you a couple of the manual features that you can use to adjust the cost and price and even add operations. So the first thing we'll show is adding an operation. So we have this Sigma S part here. It has to be cut on my plasma machine, but it might also need a, a bending operation. So I can add an operation here, pick the operation that I want and set some time against that operation. And this whole process of adding operations can be automated in a number of different ways. For now, we'll just add the operation. 
We can also adjust the price, the end price of the item. If we have an internal price list or we've done some negotiations with our customers and we want to set a price and override the system's calculated price, we can do that easily. So we'll click OK. Now when everything's ready to go, we'll change the job status to a quote so that we can send the quote out to our customers. We'll be prompted to print a report. These reports can be highly customized, just like our Sigma Nest reports that you're used to. Um, any data that you could want, we can get on the reports. Once the customer responds back and says that everything looks good and they want to know when they can have the parts, I can change the due date. And then I can even schedule the job before we even accept the order to make sure that I can make the due date on time. So we'll send a scheduling request to Sigma Schedule and we can either schedule forward or backward. We'll talk about that more in a section later on. We do a refresh, we get a green light. So now I'm confident that I can make the order on time. If you're using our full Sigma MRP, then we can also raise purchase orders from the job. It looks at all the material needed for the job, suggests how much we should order, and we can automatically raise the purchase orders that can be reviewed by our purchasing team later on. Now when we're ready to produce the job, we just change it to order status, We'll get another prompt to print a report, and this time it could be an order confirmation report. And again, all the reports are highly customizable. We can change, add, get rid of our logo, put your logo on, any kind of details you need. And then we get a screen to generate the Sigma Nest work order. So now the parts are ready to be processed in Sigma Nest. So when you're using Sigma Quote or Sigma MRP, we give you all kinds of options and flexibilities in the quote to order process. Now, some of you might be looking at this and think, that looks great, that looks cool, you can create jobs, you can add parts, but I already do that with my ERP system. I already have a system in place to create the jobs, I just need to track the production on the shop floor. Not to worry, we've got you taken care of. With all our applications here at Sigma Nest, they all work together as one big integrated solution. But we also have a product called SimTrans which lets us seamlessly integrate with outside softwares, such as an existing ERP system. So our system can work hand in hand with your existing ERP system and play the role as a, of a manufacturing execution system. So let's kind of take a look at that. So here in SimTrans, we can get, it can receive transactions from our ERP system and process them in our system. So in this example, we processed a new job transaction so now we can go look in Sigma MRP or Sigma quote, and we can see that that new job was created. The next step is to add jobs. So you are add parts. You could have added parts to that job in through your ERP system. And then your ERP system sends the transaction, tells SimTrans to do the same thing in our system. And then we'll go fetch those parts and add them to the job for you. Now, if we're using a quoting process, a quoting workflow, you, can, you may have changed that job status to a quote status in your ERP system. We can send a transaction through SimTrans to tell Sigma Nest, Sigma MRP and Sigma Quote that the job is now in order in quote status. So we can take a look at that here. Now the job is in quote. Now let's say you take the order from your ERP system and you're ready to start production. We can send another transaction, all of this happening automatically. And then in Sigma MRP and Sigma quote, we'll see that the job has changed from quote status to order status. We'll take a look at that here and just do a quick refresh. And now we're in order status. If we now go look in Sigma nest, we can open the work orders and we see that the work order was automatically created so we can start production in Sigma nest. All right. Thanks Wayne for that. It's definitely pretty cool to see the interconnectivity between the products and apps and how they play well with each other, exchange data, and save a lot of time uh, for the users. Uh, one question that, that has come up um, when I talk to customers about our connected shop, Wayne, is you know, the invariability that change will come up. Like there will be a last minute switch or you know, the workflows tend to not be linear. You know, does the connected shop handle this and how does it kind of work with the different pieces of the workflow? Absolutely. 
So in the next couple of sections, we're going to talk about our scheduling solution. So our scheduling solution at any point in time throughout the day can look at all the different operations, all the jobs, all the line items, every piece of your production, and they can rearrange those items based on due dates, priorities to make sure you're producing what you need to produce when you need to produce it. Okay. That's great. A couple of questions did come in here. Um, one was regarding SimTrans asking if it is uh, an API or an application programming interface. Um, if you don't mind, when I can probably answer that. Um, yeah. SimTrans is a, a product that acts as, you can, you can probably phrase it as an API. It, it, it expects um, transactions formatted having its data inputs formatted in a certain way as far as, you know, defining your job, due dates, which parts, and all that is um, defined in a certain way and it expects it that way. And then what it does is it takes care of the work as far as transferring that data to our other products, whether it's Sigma Nest or Sigma MRP. Um, it acts as just kind of the, the funnel for your ERP system, as well as the feedback mechanism if you want to track changes in our connected shop with Sigma Nest and a program being changed, um, that data can be fed back into your ERP system. So it's uh, less like a, like a programming interface as it is a product, but it functions that way where you give it some inputs and it gives outputs and it works through our system. Another question that came in uh, from Stanley here was when you have multiple machines like lasers, and you have a different cost per minute. Uh, do you cost these in Sigma Quote? Yes. So in Sigma Nest or in 3 Sigma MRP, there's a couple of different ways. We won't get in too much details now, but each machine can be separated as a different operation and we can set different costs and prices um, against each operation against each machine. So we can get a unique cost and a unique price per the machine that you're using. Absolutely. Okay. And yeah, another simple question here from, from Ali as far as sub-assemblies. If I change the quantity for the top assembly, the main assembly, will the sub-assembly quantities update automatically? Absolutely. We look at the top down. If the line item in a job is a particular assembly, maybe you're making a table, and now you want to produce three tables, and each table takes four legs, then the system automatically knows that you now need to produce 12 legs. Great. Well, with that, we'll go ahead and, and keep moving. And uh, again, go ahead and keep typing your questions as you think them up, but we'll continue with the next section. So in our next section, we'll talk just a little bit about scheduling, just as a prelude, and then we'll get to more scheduling in, in the next little video. So the first thing we, when we wanna talk about scheduling is a common request that we get from our customers is that they want to have a way of estimating completion times when they're quoting. They want to have a way to know if they can even make the order on time before they accept the quote. They don't want to get in hot water, accept a bunch of quotes, give a bunch, promise a bunch of due dates, and then they can't meet any of them. So that was one of the many driving factors behind the development of Sigma Schedule. Here we'll look at pre-scheduling, which allows us to temporarily schedule all our production steps even before we accept the order. So let's take a look at that. So we'll start in Sigma Nest and we'll add some parts. Just like before, those parts can be previously saved parts. They can be parts from, from an assembly or even DXF or inventor parts, however you wanna bring your parts in. We'll create a new job. Again, we'll select the customer. If we know the due date, we can add it now. If we don't, we can always add it later. In this instance, I'll go ahead and add the due date. All the parts get added to the job and calculated. Now we'll change the job status to quote to send this out to our customers. And we'll skip the report for now because we're going to focus on scheduling. Now, if the customer comes back to me the next day, maybe even 10 minutes from now and says, everything looks good. I need it in two or three days. Can you have it to me by that time? We can schedule the job, put the job on the schedule temporarily to know if we can produce the parts on time. Then with a quick refresh, we get an indicator here on the right that says, no, we can't make the parts on time, but it does give us the estimated completion date. 
So now let's take a bit of a deeper look into scheduling. One of the one of the major advantages that we have in with our Sigma schedule product is that we can schedule all aspects of your shop, all of your operations, not even not just your Sigma operations, but your painting, welding, bending operations. We can also schedule nested programs, which is a bit unique in the industry. We're able to schedule groups of parts that have been nested together, even if those parts come from jobs that have different customers or even different due dates. From there, we can use the new load manager features to adjust the schedule on the fly on the shop floor and reschedule our daily workload to account for the disruptions that you'll typically find on a shop in a day to day workflow. So let's take a look at that now. So when using Sigma schedule, we're going to show you a couple major advantages. One is that Sigma schedule can handle all the complexities of your multi operation and multi job scheduling. It can give you clear indicators when an operation or when a job is likely to be late. And we can give you a lot of different flexible options to schedule how you need to schedule for your shop. So when we have a job that needs to be scheduled, we'll send that scheduling request from either Sigma MRP or Sigma quote, and we'll see that request pop up here in this top box here. Sigma schedule will then process the request either forward or backward, depending on how you scheduled the job. And then we'll see a record of all the scheduling requests that have been processed down here. So let's take a look at what that looks like in a job. So I already have a job here. The job is in quote status and it's the due date has already been set. Now I'll schedule the job. And we'll give we'll get the option to schedule either forward or backward. Scheduling forward means I want to get the job done as soon as possible. I want to start it now and get it done as soon as possible. Scheduling backward means I want to start from the due date and work backward so that the job can be ready just in time. So we'll send that request out and then Sigma schedule will process that. And with a quick refresh, again, I can see maybe I can't make the order on time, but it does give me an estimated completion date. So if a customer is asking, I can tell them about when I think I can have it ready. Now Sigma schedule can handle complex and simple scheduling. So if we have a simple part, like just a single Sigma nest part that has to be cut in my plasma, we can schedule that. We can also schedule complex assembly that might have multiple different parts with multiple different operations. And the scheduling of those operations depends on the completion of prior operations. We can schedule all of this and keep everything in sequence. So now once we've created the job, let's go take a look at Sigma nest. Here in Sigma Nest, I've got a nest that I've put together with parts from three different jobs, all colored differently. On the right here, you can see that I have parts from jobs seven, eight, and nine, and some of them even have different customers. Now that we've nested, posted, and done a reschedule, let's go take a look at the production module. Here in the production module, we can track the process of all of our jobs and all the operations at any given time. So for job seven, I'll take a look and we'll see that the start time and end time is 2 to 246. Job 8, we'll see the exact same time, 2 to 246. And job 9 will show us the same. That's because we didn't just schedule the individual parts. We scheduled the entire nest as one unit, again, which is something unique in our system versus other scheduling softwares on the market. Now, let's take a look at uh, load manager to see some of the different options that we have there. Oh, sorry. Before we do that, we'll talk about rescheduling. So we always have the option of doing a full reschedule of the shop. We can either do it automatically a couple times a day, or we can reschedule the whole shop with a click of a button. So now let's talk about what rescheduling means. The scheduling software will look at all of our production, all of our jobs and every, all the operations that need to be produced. We'll take everything out of the schedule that isn't actively being worked on on the shop floor, and then we'll reschedule all of those jobs, all the parts, all the operations to take into account any new jobs that might have come in, any due dates or priorities that have changed, or maybe even operations on the jobs that have changed. Now, now we'll go take a look at Load Manager and we'll look at some of the features available there. First step in the production tab, again, we'll show you some info about those jobs. One of the pieces of info we'll see here is the order date. And then we also see the scheduled finish date. 
So then here's that clear indicator that I mentioned earlier about when a job is likely to be late. So at any given moment, at any, any given time, we can see the status of any of your jobs and any of your operations on the shop floor. Now in Load Manager, we've added a new capacity tab. This capacity tab gives us a 10,000 foot overview of your scheduling capacity. It shows us when we have capacity to do work and when we don't. Now in the Workstations tab, we can assign all of our different operations, not just our Sigma Nest operations, but also all the secondaries, bending, welding, painting. At any point, you can scroll through the list. You can click on any of the appointments. In this instance, I'll click on a Sigma Nest appoint program, and it'll show me a link to all the different parts and all the secondary operations that have to happen to the parts on that program. So here, for example, some of my parts in that program have to go to bending, some of them have to go to welding. Now, something else Load Manager allows us to do is to compensate in real time when we have disruptions. In this example, if one of our laser machines goes down, I can quickly turn the machine off, reschedule the day's work, and now the schedule has been reset to compensate for the fact that one of our machines went down. So now as I scroll through the list, we'll see that all the different secondary operations for all those different parts was adjusted because the program was adjusted. All right. Thanks for that <laughs> enlightening and uh, interesting section on scheduling. Um, it's pretty cool that we can schedule forwards and backwards to accommodate different needs depending on what we are scheduling. One thing that can, comes up from time to time is priority changes. You know, you might have some parts or programs that uh, that are considered hot or recuts, um, things that should actually just go ahead and cut in line as far as your scheduling and queue. Um, how does the connected shop handle this part? Yep. So there's a couple different ways. Um, if a hot job comes in and you've nested the program and you're ready to go get it cut at the machine, if you've rescheduled the shop, then we always take into account high priority jobs. So if that job's due date is now and it's super high priority, it'll automatically get scheduled to the front of the line. If you don't schedule the job, then load manager is able to understand we have implemented specific features to understand hot jobs and hot programs. It's able to understand that a job, a specific program hasn't been scheduled. And when you do a resolve to change up your day's work, to reschedule your day's work, it knows to put that program at the front of the line. Okay. Excellent. And Ali has a question about changing the schedule manually. Can I reorder programs myself? Absolutely. Um, just like our, just like load manager has been for years and years, you can drag and drop any of the appointments to any different machines that they're compatible with to different time slots. Um, and then the schedule will adjust all the secondary operations to meet that change. So for example, if you moved a program to a later time of the day, we'll give you indicators that you already have appointments for say the bending or the welding operation. We give you indicators that now everything's out of sync and we can automatically resolve that for you. Okay, great. All right, let's go ahead and continue with the next section then for shop floor management and shipping. All right, so in this next section, let's move out onto the shop floor. So we've taken the order, we've programmed the nest, and we've scheduled all the parts, all the programs, all the secondary operations. Now we need to actually do the production. And I need to know at any given time, like we've talked about throughout the webinar, at any moment where stuff is and where the production process is on the shop floor, which parts have been cut, which ones haven't, and which parts have been bent and painted and which ones haven't. So let's take a look at that. So some of the major advantages to the shop floor feedback functionality that we have with our connected shop products is that we can give you greater visibility of your product status and production status. And we'll incorporate that real time feedback from the shop floor on all of your operations. So you always know where you stand. So in this example, I have a job and I've already ordered and scheduled it. The job is a simple job. I only have a single part, maybe multiple quantity. And I've got two operations. It's got to be laser cut and then it's got to go to bending. So once we've posted the program and rescheduled to account for the program, we'll take a look at color offload. So color offload, as many of you may already be familiar with it, is used by the machine operator to 
process programs on the shop floor and give us feedback. We can see things like a list of the programs, things like program name, the sheet that the program is supposed to be on, material thickness, even estimated cutting time. So color offload lets us do a number of things. One option is to swap the sheet. If for some reason this sheet isn't available or it's damaged, I can swap the sheet to account in inventory that we're using a different sheet. I can start, stop, and finish the program to give us real-time feedback on the status of the program. I can even reject parts. If some of the parts were damaged during production, we can reject them and they automatically get re-entered into the bucket to be produced and nested in Sigma Nest. Then I can update the program to let the system know that the program is completed and everything's done. So now let's take, let's go, we'll go back into Sigma MRP or Sigma Quote and we'll take a look at the production tab. We'll see that we get a blue bubble, which is our in color indicator to know that that operation is complete. And now the part needs to go to bending. So let's go out to the press break. So here in shop floor data capture, which is very similar to color offload, we can process all of our secondary operations. So I've selected our bending operation. We can see a list of parts that need to be bent. We can see things like previous operation status, and we can filter by things like job number or even part name. We can select the part, click next. We can review any allocation. If it's a, if it's a, um, like a painting operation and we've allocated buckets of paint, we can see data like that here. We have the job. We have our parts in the process that we're trying to pro process. Just like color offload, we can start. We can add setup time. So, so let's say it takes me 10 minutes to set my tools up on the press break. We let the program run. Let the timer run while we're processing and bending the parts. And then we can stop or finish the, the process. We can type in how many items we completed if we have to, if we had to scrap any, so they now need to be remade. We can also enter the breakdown time here. And then we're taken right back to the home screen and we're ready to process the next operation. So now let's take a look back in the production tab. And we can see again that status in real time. Laser cutting is done. The bending is done. Now the next step is to deliver the parts to our customers. So we'll take a look at one of our new web applications, Sigma Shipping, to create that delivery note. So we can select the job that we need to deliver. We can create the new delivery note or a packing slip. If there is any additional um, shipping cost or shipping price that we get from the delivery company, we can add that de those details here from the shop floor. We can select all the parts. We can even change the quantity of the items in the job or in the delivery note in case we want to do a partial delivery. We can add details to the delivery note or the packing slip, header data, footer data, any notes that we want to type in. We get a preview of the delivery note and then we can save. The delivery note gets created in our system. We'll see that delivery note in Sigma MRP. And then we can either print, preview, save, download uh, multiple options with the report that gets produced for that gets produced, uh, whether it's a report that you want to have on file, give to the driver, or if it's a packing slip you put in the box. Now we come back to the job and we see that the job is now in delivery status because I've delivered the parts. And we can even see that delivery status here, or the, you can see the details of the delivery notes here. Now we took a quick look at the, at Sigma shipping, but now I want to go back and give a little bit more details on that piece of software. So Sigma shipping is one of our new web applications in our new shop manager. One of the benefits of it being a web application is that it can be used anywhere on the shop floor, even on a tablet, anything that has a web browser. Another major benefit is that we show no financial information. So in Sigma Shipping and even Sigma Receive, one of our new applications we'll talk about later, you'll never see dollars and cents financial information, which is details you don't want to see on the shop floor. Sigma Shipping allows us to either make delivery notes to send finished products to our customers or dispatch notes to send things to our subcontract suppliers for outside processing. So we'll quickly show some of the extra features that we didn't get to a minute ago. You can select the job. We give you, if the job already has an estimated shipping cost or shipping price put in, that can be changed 
if on the shop floor you get extra details from the delivery company that says, no, 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 it's actually going to be a little bit more to ship these. We can add that data here. We can then select all the parts. We can change the quantity of the parts that we want to add, just like I showed you earlier, in case we want to do partial deliveries. We can also add items from other jobs into the delivery note to make one big package. Or we could even split by weight. If your packages have weight limits and you want the software to automatically divide them out into different deliveries so that they don't exceed the weight limit, we can handle that as well. So we'll go create the new note. And again, just like before, we can add details, notes, header, we get the address information. So any of this can be edited or modified before the packing slip or the delivery note gets created. We'll just add some info here and we click next. And just like before, we get a preview of the details on the packing slip or the delivery note, and we click next. The delivery note's created. And again, just like before, we can download, print, or save um, the report for to either give to the delivery driver, keep on hand, or as a packing slip that we put in the box. All right. Good stuff there with the shipping. I tend to forget that production has that tail end of the process, which is getting the made stuff out to the people that need it. Um, a couple of questions that, that did come in for this previous section that we want to go ahead and take a moment for are, um, can an operator log into various jobs at the same time? Yeah, um, so we have um, shop floor data capture is often set up as a one-to-one -one scenario. So one instance of the software, one seat per workstation. So if you have a single operator that's operating maybe one automated workstation where he can start it and then kind of walk away and go to another op no, another operation and do the processing there, absolutely. Okay, so basically for a given job or a given part, Multi, uh, either the same operator or multiple people can be working like in, in conjunction or at the same time with that stuff. Exactly. Uh -huh. Cool. Uh, another question is for jobs, um, is there a way to see what's been shipped and which ones are uh, not shipped, like booked out or still being made? Or is sure. there a way to view the statuses? Yes. Um, all the jobs have a different status depending on what, um, whether they've been shipped out, whether they're late, whether they're um, in production, all of that can be seen on one of the other screens that we don't have visible in the presentation today. Okay. And that's for both the job as a whole and then even the parts and items within the job, right? These statuses. Correct. Yep. Okay. That's, that's really helpful. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and continue on then to inventory purchasing and receiving. So now we want to talk about what happens after the production is done. So a lot of the stuff we've talked about up to now has been, we need to get the parts out. We need to take the orders. We need to make the stuff. And we need to get it to the customers. But what happens in the back end? Um, so because Sigma MRP and Sigma schedule and Sigma quote have this tight integration with all of our other products, we already know what the inventory is in real time. There's only no guesswork, no syncing that needs to happen. We always know at any given moment what your inventory is. So now let's take a look at um, taking care of the back end and actually ordering and bringing new material into the shop. So let's take a look at that now. So here is our list of item masters. Now an item master, um, first, we'll talk about some advantages. So some of the advantages is that we can help you know when and what to purchase. We can simplify the purchasing process and we can simplify the process of actually bringing that material into your facility. So here's my list of item masters and an item master can be anything from a sheet to a bucket of paint to nuts and bolts. We show you all kinds of details about that inventory, everything from how much you have, what's on order, and what a minimum level is that you want to keep in stock. Now, purchase orders, when we want to actually buy the material, they can be created a couple different ways. One way is from the job, and then another way is manually in the purchasing module. So the first, we'll show you what that process looks like when you create the purchase order from the job. If I have a job here and I want to raise a purchase order, we hit it this a little bit earlier, but we'll go into a little bit more detail now. It shows me a list of all the different material and even the list of subcontract suppliers 
and some subcontract operations that I might need to send a purchase order for. It shows me everything from what I need for the job to what I have in stock and even my, in my minimum level. In this instance, I need two sheets to complete this job. I have to have 30 as my minimum level. I've got 31 in stock. So once I produce the job, I need to buy one. So it tells me that I should buy one. We can automatically create the purchase order, which gets created in a draft status so that our purchasing department can review it later. Now we can go look at that purchase order. The purchase order is here again in that draft status. And we can see the items in the job in the purchase order. Now, if I want to create a new purchase order uh, manually, I can always go to the new purchase order button and make a new purchase order manually. Um, when I'm ready to send the purchase order out, I can change the job status to sent out. I can print any kind of report again, highly customizable. You can modify them to have whatever data you want. Now we'll go back and look at that item master that I just purchased. So we'll see for that, for that item master in this instance, is a, it's a sheet. I have one now on order. So we have visibility of what you have and what's supposed to be coming. Now, when I'm ready to receive that material into the inventory, I can create a new GRN. That's a goods received note. We link the goods received note to the purchase order. So if you've done multiple um, receive, if you've received multiple shipments, maybe half now, half later, we track all that info for you. We create the GRN and now we book the material into our inventory. It's easy as selecting a location. Where am I going to put it? If it's a sheet, we can give it a cast or a heat number to tell that we get from the supplier. The quantity is already set from the GRN and we click OK. Now that sheet is available and accessible in our inventory. And we can even print reports like stickers or labels if you want to put those on the sheets. Now we'll go back and take a look at the inventory again. And now we'll see again for that same item master. We don't have any on order anymore because we received them. And we'll see that the in stock value has jumped to 32. Now let's take a look at Sigma Receive. Sigma Receive allows us to do some of those same functions that we just saw in Sigma MRP, but it allows us to do them in a, on a tablet, anything that's web-based right on the shop floor. And it also doesn't show us any of those financial details that we may not want some of our shop floor workers to see. So we'll take a look at the process in Sigma Receive. We can make a new GRN. We can see a list of all of our purchase orders that we expect that need to be booked in. We can select the purchase order. We can create a new GRN. If we, we can select all the items, if maybe we're only receiving some of it now and we're, we're going to receive some later, you can change the amount that you're receiving now and you can see any amounts that you've previously received. Very similar to Sigma shipping, you can add details into this page that will show up on that report that you're going to print. Then we get a preview of the GRN, the which purchase order it came from, what's included in the note, and then we can save. We again see that the new GRN gets created. And then if you're using our Sigma MRP software, you can go to Sigma MRP and you can see that the, deliver, that the GRN was created. Now we need to book the material in. So there's a couple different options I'll show you when booking in. So the first thing we'll see is this first item we have in the job or in the purchase order is a sheet that has quantity six. Maybe you want to book this in as a single item that just has a quantity of six. We select where it's going. We give it a heat number or a cast number. If you need to make edits like the size of the sheet, maybe it's not exact. It's never exact, is it? You got to change that. And then if you want to reserve that sheet for a specific customer, we can do that. And then we can just save. So now we've created batch 19 with quantity six. But what if you want to book those batches into the inventory as individual batches? So you, instead of creating, in this instance, instead of creating one sheet with quantity 10, you want to create 10 sheets with quantity one. We make that super quick and easy. Again, you set the location, where am I going to put them? You give the heat number, and then we have our split batch button. We can just click the button, tell it the size of the batches that we want to split it into. In this instance, one, when we click OK. And now the system will automatically generate 10 individual quantity one batches. 
and all of the details for these batches are editable. You can change the X and Y for each one. Maybe one of the sheets is bigger or smaller than the other one. If they have different heat numbers or you want to put different location notes, you can change all those individually. And then we just click save. And then as you can see at the top, the counter increases as we book in all of those batches all in one go. Now we can go back to the GRN list to see if there's any new GRNs that still need to be booked in. If none there, we can go back to the Sigma receive landing page and be ready to book in new things when new purchase orders arrive. All right, thanks Wayne. Uh, one question that did come in uh, during your presentation was the ability for our products to interface with various accounting software packages. Um, is this possible? Absolutely. So we integrate with all of the with most of the major big accounting packages, um, any of the different versions of Sage, um, QuickBooks, both online and desktop, um, and even Zero. And we're constantly adding new accounting integrations. We can do everything from so our software also generates the invoices. We can sync those invoices with the accounting package. And then when those invoices are paid, we can actually take data, receive data from the accounting package to adjust things like work in progress and credit limit and those types of things. Great. Um, just, uh, just a practical question for those in the audience that are in various stages of their shop being connected. You know, what, how, how do they move towards a more connected shop? We've showed a lot of products here. There's definitely some gradient of where they're at to more of what you've shown today. What, how do you recommend kind of, you know, evolving and, and leveling up their current operations to more of what the connected shop that you showed today? Yeah, that's a great question. It's one that we get all the time. So the first step always, always is contact your, your regional or local sales rep. They can help walk you through that process and show you what the options look like and how you can stair step from maybe no automation or no shop floor control to complete automation and complete control. Um, that process for a lot of our customers typically looks like um, a simple integration at first with just either Sigma MRP or Sigma quote, just getting that process of actually tracking your orders, knowing what status they're in. And then later we typically see customers adding on things like Sigma schedule. So they have this more, I, a greater idea of where everything is on the shop at one time, and then adding in all of your shop floor production and tracking features like color offload and SFDC. So then that brings the whole picture together. Nice. Yeah, the modular nature of our, our product portfolio really lends itself well to um, stepping up at your own pace and integrating things that are more important first or the, the, the bigger ticket items to get to that, um, uh, that level of, of having a connected shop. Exactly. And a lot of our customers um, may not have many secondary operations. So like they may not do a lot of bending or a lot of welding or painting, and they really just focus on Sigma S cutting. We're perfectly you know, suited to handle that. And then as your business grows, as you start seeing more business and as you start adding on extra things like new operations, maybe you start doing some powder coating that you've never done before. It's very simple to add those extra operations and those extra things kind of bolt them onto the system that you have in place. Okay. All right, thanks so much everyone for attending. We hope it was informative and thought provoking. Uh, we want you to have a great day and we'll see you at the next Sigma Nest event. Thanks.